Good morning. Today's video is about keeping logbooks, things like this one. Now, captains have been keeping logbooks for centuries, and professional captains still do. But many recreational sailors don't keep logbooks. And um, maybe some even think that it's not really worthwhile keeping a logbook anymore because if you have a chart plotter and other electronic devices on board your ship and they record data and you can look at that data later on if you like, what's the point of having a logbook? So I think that it is true that uh, the uh, technological advances that have happened uh, should have significant influence on how you design and use logbooks. And I shall have some concrete suggestions to make later on in this video regarding that. But I do believe that it's very much worthwhile to keep a logbook uh, when you are a skipper, especially if you sail out on, on an ocean. So, here are some advantages of uh, maintaining a logbook. First of all, there's the safety aspect. And by maintaining a logbook here, I mean a physical thing, something with paper and a pen uh, or pencil, uh, old-fashioned stuff like that. Why is this a good idea? Well, first, there's the safety thing. If, if the electronics uh, go down on the ship, you can just look at your paper and see where you were at any at the last time you, you recorded your position. And that'll be a lot better than having no information at all. It's also more robust than most electronic equipments. A, a logbook, a physical logbook doesn't mind getting dropped on the floor, that sort of thing. <clears throat> a good logbook is a planning device. You plan for things like tides, um, but also resources, electricity, uh, water, supplies and uh, diesel. These are, are important resources to plan for. Third, it's a, a place where you record the day's work, as it's called in the Adler Cole's uh, logbook. So it gives you sort of a very quick sense of the progress you have made over the last 24 hours, which is, is helpful for understanding your journey. Then a good logbook should help you get tactical understanding, I think. It should help you understand changes in weather patterns, uh, changes in your, in your environment, generally speaking. Again, that has to do with safety and with planning. And uh, a good logbook can also help you learn things that are not just uh, short-term tactical things but uh, things you can bring, learning you can take on to new journeys or share with other sailors. I think this is a, a really underused aspect of, of, logs, of logbooks. And finally, a, a good logbook uh, can be a, a, a historical record of the journey involving the people uh, you meet as, as they write in the Adler Cole's logbook and many other things about the journal, journey which are useful and also perhaps just fun to uh, reread after you have completed your journey, a bit like flipping through an old-fashioned photo album. So there are all of these reasons that I think are good reasons for trying to do a good logbook. So for me, a logbook is something I use very actively, both when I sail and uh, when I come home. Uh, I also have to say that uh, I do think there are different ways of designing and using logbooks once you get into it. And uh, to get into it, you have to get into the details, as always, the, the devil is in the detail. So uh, I now want to dive into the practicalities of maintaining a logbook and I'm going to use as my starting point the Adler Coles Nautical Logbook, which I used for years as a, uh, as a logbook on Kaka. Um, and then I'm going to start the discussion from there of how one might uh, develop further on, on the ideas uh, in this design. This is what the Adler Coles logbook looks like when you open it on a double page. There is one 
double page for each day you are sailing. And to make matters a bit simpler, let's assume that we're out on an ocean voyage now. So we are sailing 24 hours a day, no harbors involved, no tide, anything like that. So uh, how does one fill out this thing? And I'll go through this uh, in, in some detail because it's actually quite interesting, the design choices they have made when they designed this logbook. You start, and I would start, uh, do this as the first entry of the day. So that would be the first entry after midnight. I would put in the date, the time zone traveling from towards, and then the crew. So that's sort of the header for the day. Then at noon, there's some bookkeeping to be done. Put in your noon position, latitude and longitude. And you do some calculations, uh, the days run, how many nautical miles did you sail the last 24 hours? So that's the time underway, 24 hours, and the average speed would be one divided by the other. Over here, we would have some bookkeeping. I use that mainly for the engine. So I read off the engine hours and how many hours I've used the engine during the past 24 hours. Then you see there are some rows here on, on the page. In fact, there are 24 of them, one for each hour in the day it's intended. So in principle, you could write your data here for the first hour at midnight. You take a snapshot at midnight, you take another snapshot at 1 a.m. and so on. A lot of bookkeeping. So let's look at the columns. In the first column, one puts down the time of the observation. Course means uh, magnetic heading. Deviation is the, the ship's. DV is uh, for the ship's magnetic deviation. Error is for the geographical uh, variation of the magnetic field. And further along, you see leeway. And uh, there's no column for uh, current, uh, interestingly. But all of these. Uh, measures have to do with the translation between magnetic heading and course over ground. And what's left then is uh, a column to do with power, which means are you sailing under sail or motor, and then the wind data. So the direction of the wind and the force of the wind, the barometer reading, and then information about the sea state, cloud and weather visibility. And on the right, you have uh, space for notes and remarks, which could be anything really. What sails are you using? Uh, did you meet a vessel? Have you make a bit big change of course? Uh, anything you like, really. So I uh, I tried this uh, for a couple of years, and I really tried to stay faithful to this uh, format. Here's an example of, of a journey I made from Münster in uh, Sweden, a nice little natural harbor to Gilelei in Denmark. It was an 18 hour long trip. In fact, this was sort of the first uh, non-trivial solo sailing I did on Kaka or any boat really. Um, as sort of a practice, uh, I, I had already decided at that time that we were going to sail car from Denmark to the Caribbean and I thought there might be some situation where I need to just pop from one uh, town to the next uh, to pick up crew or something like that and do that solo so I thought I should practice a bit of solo sailing. Little did I know that two years later I would be uh, I would be in the process of crossing the Atlantic solo. That wasn't the plan that's uh, that's another story but in any case you see what I did here First of all, I hacked the columns a bit to, to use them for something that I found more useful. Uh, it depends on what equipment you have on board your boat, of course, but um, like many other cruisers, I have a GPS system and a chart plot or so. From that, I get uh, speed over ground and course over ground without having to do any calculation. So I have columns for that. Then um, there's the log uh, column and 
I, I used that and I dutifully calculated all of these distances, sailor and or motor. And the wind data I wrote down, the barometer I wrote down, and then the other columns for sea state, cloud and weather. Then I added some columns for the battery, three columns in fact. The amp hours column is for the state of the battery. And uh, the, uh, then there are two columns to do with the voltage of the battery on two different voltmeters. And then there's a column here for how, how well I sell the boat relative to the polar coordinates of the boat. So 100% means optimal relative to polars. And then, of course, I have a, a, a column for GPS positions, which I read off the GPS system. So, um, so that's an adaptation to, uh, to my particular setup on Kaka. And at the end of the day, you see here at the bottom, I wrote how, how far I, I traveled uh, during the trip altogether. On, on, two, on two different logs, the paddle wheel and the GPS. Um, now, there are, I think there are some problems here. Um, first of all, you see, I end up using all the paper, all the space on just data uh, in the form of numbers. And uh, basically, anyway, and, and there's no significant space left for writing comments. Uh, the second problem is that, and it's related to the first, is that this is just uninterpreted data. Nothing stands out when you look at it. It's not clear what's important here and what's not important, or if anything is important. Uh, so I think that's a bit of a problem when you want to use a logbook, because a logbook is a is a tool for many things, including decision making and recording your decisions and analyzing situations. And you want to you want the things that are in there to be important. And not all of this is important. It's not every hour that something important happens. So this made me think about what other ways could one make logbooks. You know, format logbooks differently, and uh, I've experimented a little bit with that, and and so I want to show you the way I do it now. <clears throat> so, this is an example of a page uh, in my logbook. In, uh, on uh, my trip from um, Marigo Bay in St. Martin to Halta. It's one of the days that's uh, described in, in another YouTube video I have about crossing the Atlantic solo. So you see there's some similarity. I've reused some of the ideas from the Adat Cole's book. So there's a header first that sort of summarizes the day. That's sort of the top part here. And we have the date. We have a time zone where we're traveling from, where we're traveling to. And then I've put in a, a day count of, of the journey and then the crew. I have a noon position, just as in Adlard Coles. I have recorded the stored log at noon, uh, which was 15,833.93 nautical miles. Uh, how log increment is the uh, day's run. So I sailed 139 during those 24 hours. And that was, that was the time sailed and the average speed. This is like the Adler Gold's logbook. And then my engine readings, what was the engine hours read at noon and how many hours did I sail during the past 24 hours, 1.2 hours. And then I have a field here for my solar panels. How much energy did my solar panels generate for the day? That's actually not at noon, but uh, at the end of the day. So 1.5 kilowatt. So you see here, it's, it's, it's a different format in that it's not a, a form with fields you put numbers into. It's, uh, I would call it a list format. So I list 
relative or relevant uh, quantities in a particular order to make up a header. But it's much the same information as in the Atlet Coles book, so, so no huge difference here. Then we come to the observations. And uh, there are some differences. Uh, so first of all, I, I don't have exactly 24 observations per day. Uh, I could have fewer, I could have more in principle. Uh, my whole philosophy is that I record something if and only if I think there's something interesting to record. So for example, at 2 a.m. the uh, wind veered to due west and I started jiving. That's, that's a significant event. So I make a, a note of it in the logbook. And so you see that there could be many hours between two uh, logbook entries. If nothing very dramatic happened, then uh, uh, I won't write anything. Here I took down the cells and so on. So again, I would call this a list format instead of a, what you could call a table format, which would be the Edlard Cole's way of doing it, because I list relevant quantities every time. And the format is that there's first, there's a list of readings, quantitative readings, followed by a comment. And it's typeset as one uh, paragraph here. And because it's not in columns, I have to I have to have some uh, ways of knowing what data is here. So I've introduced this. Well, this is quite obvious. It's the position, pos equals blah blah blah. That's the position. Then I use uh, v for velocity. So in other words, this is the boat's velocity. I'm sailing at uh, course over ground 50 degrees, and I'm sailing at a speed over ground of 5.2 knots. That's an, uh, a notation I've introduced because I think it's a, a nice compact way of describing the velocity of the boat. Similarly, for the wind, I write W equals 275 at 11.7. So W for wind. So the wind is uh, coming from 275 and it's blowing at 11.7 knots. And then the other fields, apparent wind angle and so on, and my comment to, uh, to the event. So that's uh, what it looks like. And, uh, and then you see I have chosen also here to add uh, a little, you, you could call them diary entries of what actually happened that day what I was thinking or how, what was my morale, anything like that. So I write things like, I didn't get much sleep last night. I couldn't get the wind pilot to steer as well as usual. I had to spend time attending to it. Uh, something about my antibiotics because I had this inflamed foot. Um, being becalmed to what I had for dinner. On the next page of the logbook, I have a map with a track showing how far I had come on that Saturday morning, the 16th of May. And uh, I also have a whole paragraph here analyzing the sailing that went on between the Wednesday and the Friday based on a table of wind and course data that also appears in the logbook. So both the table and this map were created by a computer with a computer uh, harvesting data from the logbook. And how one does that I'll describe in part two of this uh, mini series. Now the logbook is a lot more useful. Than, um, than just these tables of numbers, because it's a place to register your decisions, your thoughts, and you only write down what you think is sufficiently important that it, it needs recording. 
so I find this much more useful uh, and um, that's why I, I wanted to show to you. Now you may wonder, well, uh, how do you actually do this? Well, let's see. Uh, do you sit and type this up on the computer um, in the middle of uh, of gale force winds uh, and the answer to that is no I don't. Uh, what I do is I first use a very simple notepad and uh, I'll go and show you that and then uh, explain about the typesetting a little bit uh, later. So this is uh, the physical logbook that I actually keep on the chart table table when I sell. It's, it's simply a, a notepad, just stapled at one end. Can open it up, and uh, then I will uh, I will show you the the page that uh, relates to uh, the same day as you saw types a minute ago, so the sixteenth of May, and you'll see that uh, what I what I do. At the chart table is actually very little work which is important because you may be writing these things down in, in a rough sea state uh, and you're tired and all of that so so it has to be super fast and simple when you when you take down data so here you see the page of my physical logbook the notepad relating to Saturday 16th of May and let's just uh, zoom in on it a little bit so the header is just one line it says Saturday 16th of May UTC minus two nothing about where we're sailing from or who's on board or where we're sailing to because I sort of know that and there's no need to write that again that'll come in later then at 2 a.m. I wrote wind veered to 270 started jiving um, you recognize that I'm sure and from 9 to 12 uh, then at 3 o'clock there's a lot of uh, registration of data there of my position the course and speed over ground the wind direction and speed the barometer reading and the apparent wind angle then from 9 to 12 I was becalmed and then at 12 I did my noon uh, recordings, my position, my log reading, trip log one and trip log two, that's paddle wheel and GPS, trip log since the start of the journey in nautical miles, this is the stored log here, uh, and then the dead reckoning is how far did I sail during the the, since I last reset it, which must have been two days ago, 302 nautical miles is not, I don't sail that far in 24 hours, otherwise I I guess I should be doing the round the globe or something. So uh, I record the engine hours, the uh, course and speed over ground and the wind direction and speed and the battery balance, minus 22.4 amp hours. And then a couple more entries and then at night uh, as at sunset rather I make another recording here I say oh I have the state of the batteries minus 5.3 soon it'll soon be sunset I'm sailing directly towards water now so <clears throat> um, this is an important observation to make around sunset what the battery state is because you know you're not going to get any more sun uh, after sunset so um, these are examples of uh, a kind of discipline where you you do what something when it's necessary and then you have the discipline of always recording your new information and uh, it's not really a lot of work and it's easy to do if if uh, if you sort of know what you're doing and um, it can actually once you get this data across to a computer you can do a lot of neat things uh, with this data even though it's from such a very primitive source as this so how do I get from this uh, 
notepad on the left to uh, to the logbook I have on the right. Well, it's uh, it works like this. Uh, remember, I said I I write this in the notebook on the notepad here uh, in real time uh, when whenever something interesting is happening, something that I need to record, I write it down right away, easily, quickly on the notepad. Then once every 24 hours or so, whenever I have the opportunity on board the boat, I sit down with my laptop, which I carry along with me, and I type it up when there's nothing else to do um, and uh, I, I feel mentally prepared to do a little bit of work. I type this up and as you see, it's not, it's not like it's a lot of text, so it doesn't take a huge amount of work to do it. And then while I'm at it, I also write these other notes. So I have a combination of, of the logbook data in a, in a nice readable form and, and my notes uh, right away. So that, that'll be, not be delayed by more than 24 hours typically. Uh, so I actually have something which is, is quite, quite nice to work with as, as a text, uh, even during the uh, passage. And um, you could use any system for doing this in principle if all you want to do is to just type it up. You could do it in Word or whatever you prefer. Uh, I, I use some different technologies that, that have some different advantages, uh, namely the ability to harvest data from the logbook itself and analyze them and use them for other purposes. And that's what I'll be talking about in the second video. So to sum up, I have uh, shown you two different designs of logbooks, if you like. On the left, the uh, classical Adlot Cole's way of doing things with uh, columns. Uh, I would call it the table style of logbooks. I have shown you why I think this has some issues with it, this format. And I have shown you this different way of doing logbooks, which I could, we could call a, a list format. And uh, they're different, obviously. And uh, I would be very curious to hear what, uh, what you think are the pros and the cons of different ways of doing logbooks. I call it this, these videos the art of keeping a logbook because I don't actually think it's totally obvious how you should do it. And um, uh, each method has its pros and cons. This is the one I've, uh, I've adopted uh, for now. And uh, let's, let's have a discussion about it in the comments. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to harvest data from logbooks and how to use that data for doing really neat things like making maps or understanding weather patterns that you've experienced. And uh, meanwhile, if you, um, if you want to have a look at uh, my style of writing logbooks, uh, pop over to toftesailing.com where I have excerpts of my logbook from my Atlantic voyage uh, last year.